Right, good morning and welcome back to the channel for another video from Kinted the Marina. We are here thanks to the team at Glencore Golf. I'll take a little bit of a further look around this golf course very, very shortly. But what am I up to this morning? Well, it's a personal dilemma. I'm trying to choose which driver to play this season. This is a comparison video. It's a head to head, but we're looking at why you might choose one driver over the other. What are the key factors that are gonna make your decision possible? And I know from my own dilemma, there's a few questions that need to be answered. And one of the major factors within this decision-making process is quite simply about confidence when you get to that first tee. And that confidence for me comes at even from the address position, am I liking what I'm seeing at address? Have I got confidence in that profile? And then we're gonna talk about the confidence that you have in that head and shaft combination. So this is by no means a head to head. This is about all considerations when you're choosing the driver that's right for you. And that confidence is so required of the first swing of the day. And that's typical of where I would be. I'm not a great type of player to warm up before I get to that first tee. It's three quick swipes and then I want to hit my sort of go to nice and safe left to right. Try and get in the middle of the fairway. And that comes from that big deal of confidence. And the confidence really is as much in the shaft as it is in their head choice. That was with the stealth. I'm going to switch up to the PXG and see if I can replicate the similar sort of shot type. It's almost exactly the same shot. It's probably landed in a very similar position, but that will also be key factor of what we look at today. Two very, very similar strikes, exactly the same shot shape. And I will be interested to know just which one of these has gone further because that'll be largely due to the spin as opposed to the ball speed. Well, that's a really interesting start from that first tee shot. They are literally side by side. And what I thought might happen was slightly wind in two is that the HD might be a little bit spinny. That's one of the concerns that I have and something that I'm really interested in finding out. Pushing dry ball data to one side and seeing what happens in reality. When, like I said, we've got some wind in two and also playing the same shot downwind, what happens? And in this case, probably a little bit surprised that the, the lower spin model of the PXG didn't kick on a little bit further. So that's an interesting start. So we've got the first tee shot out the way, a little bit of a nervy one, not warmed up and a bit guidey, like I said, but the next challenge is a par five where not only have we got to find a fairway, which you'll see very shortly is, uh, well, tight to say the least, but we also want to liven up a little bit in terms of club head speed. So things change. And what happens when that extra bit of effort is applied? We'll start off with the stealth. And for the interests of transparency, my line is the tallest tree that you can see in what is effectively the middle of the fairway. I'll be going to the left tree line and trying to hit a bit of a cut. I've played this yesterday and the shaping of the shot means you've got to be tight down that left hand side. That's what I'm trying to do, but can we? Well, do you know what's a really solid ball and the shame is that it started just a little bit too far left it is cutting back but i think it'll be tight on the tree line but what i will say totally different swing from the first tee you know i really like this shaft that's in this stealth hd and the stability that it provides and the kind of tempo that i'm comfortable with is also one of the key factors that will make my decision one way or the other so Maybe not ideal, but certainly everything I got back from the club head and the shaft and the swing was what I'm looking for. I will try and make a slight adjustment so the PXG has a little bit in its favour in that uh, maybe I was a little bit angled down that left hand side. So we'll make the amendment, but this thing has got a lot to beat. I'm really favourable, as I've said on many occasions, towards the Stealth 2 driver, the HD. So what can this thing do? Oh, that was a much better ball. That was the line it was intended 
in the first place no curvature this time it's not the weak sort of fade shot that i hit off the first tee and again i was fit for this driver and this shaft just a couple of months ago and it's that stability that this offers very similar to that pro force shaft this is a graphite design shaft vr6 and again very much suited to my swing majorly important so gone after a couple if you like and again not a lot to split on both today's video comes to you in association with long-term channel travel partner glencore golf holidays and we are at quinta da marina in cascai portugal the hotel and golf course have been a superb place to play and stay in the portuguese sunshine and the proximity to lisbon airport and nearby cascai make it the perfect european golf destination so if you like what you see in today's video then make sure you click on the link in the video description below or head on over to glencoregolf.com for more booking information i've already said this isn't a comparison video because there's too many differences between these two clubs that would mean that a lot of you question why i would put these two together in a head-to-head -head format loft for example 9 degrees on one 10.5 on the other being the pxg then we've got these shaft differences again that for all their similarities ultimately there's a different shaft in each but one thing i'm learning is that i hear things like if you play a 10.5 driver head then you should always play a 10.5 driver head if that's what you've been fit for let's say in the pxg but I don't believe that to be the case because the ball flights of these two drivers are very, very similar, but there's one and a half degrees difference in terms of the loft. And that's because of the way the club is weighted and what it also assists you with in terms of launch. So club heads are made very, very differently and the loft and the weighting system will mean different things. So I think it's really important to notice when you go into a custom fit or when you go to buy a new driver, test the head, test the shaft combination and make sure all those things align and get the kind of thing that you're expecting to see and not maybe one that you've gone in there with that thing that i hate which is a preconceived idea now another part of the decision making process i don't care what anybody said is the way a driver looks even from shelf appeal i've got to like the look of something before i decide to pick it up and give it a go now these are very very different in that uh, looks department as well and i know that um, if you're considering one of these i'll at least give you my opinion on the two i'm gonna start with the pxg and one of the big differences for me is the crown and the crown is probably the all important bit at the end of the day that's the bit we're looking down on at address and it's this anti-glare matte finish little bit of accents around the edging and then this raised profile at the front in terms of the face x marks the spot very simplistic really really like this thing at address cannot knock it at all ticks every box for me a phrase that i like to use but it really does i don't see any offset at address it's a very neutral driver in terms of that address position as well so yeah everything i like and then we go into the stealth two model and i'm going to start again with that crown it's the gloss finish and again i prefer what they had with sort of sim 2 max and again that sort of muted matte finish that they had in there was superb so i wish they hadn't have gone back to the gloss finish uh, but albeit it's very um, minimalistic let's say minimal markings apart from just a bit of a red accent around the back side which in my opinion makes the head profile just look a little bit smaller and again that's something that appeals to me this is a hd driver which is a draw bias and there's a suggestion there's a bit of offset there i've got to admit it's not something i really notice at address so i'm not put off by that at all but they are very very different drivers and at your address position i would be leaning towards the pxg from a visual perspective but the key factor throughout all of this looks and loft and shaft choice and all the rest of it the big key takeaway is always going to be this idea of confidence and the thing that i have is i have faith in the stealth driver and shaft combination and because there's been some longevity in terms of performance i've played with it on uh, for the last what is it now 18 months then it's confidence straight away I've, I've drove well with it so pxg's got a big job to try and shift this right 
Anyway, back to performance and let's see if anything can persuade me to let this one go and make a change. Again, my preferred choice now would be to easy swing down that left hand side, hopefully with a little bit of cut. That's just, you know, I mean, it's, I'm impressed with that myself. <laughs> You know, I, I, the thing is about this HD driver, HD head, is I'm not sure if it's the longest driver I've tested. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it isn't. But what I do know is that HD elements and the weighting system that is sort of um, helping me, if you like, not cut that ball too much. That's the simplest way of putting it. Certainly seems to be effective. So I can hit my cutty swing. It moves a little bit, but not a lot. So next up, PXG. Can I hit a similar shot down the left hand side, a little bit of cut? Well, the answer is yes. It, you know, it feels a little bit faster off the face of the PXG. I can't deny it every time I hit it. And that'll be a really interesting, uh, again, visual up um, green, oh, up fairway rather. And let's just see exactly where those two are in terms of difference because maybe it's just a sound thing carbon wood face is a very i think it's a very soft and muted feel um, so this sounds faster and maybe that's just deceptive on my ears what has it really done when we get down the fairway right it's important to note where the t is which is back in the tree line there you can see those raised positions this is where the pxg ball finished i'm just going to walk back and hopefully, Han, you can pick up where the HD ball finished. And I did have an idea that we've probably gained maybe 20, 25 yards in terms of uh, distance there, extra distance. So it was as I felt. The PXG driver from my testing over this last couple of months, I think, is longer. That could be a combination of everything combined, but I certainly feel that I'm getting a bit more yardage and a bit more ball speed out of the PXG. So the question for me is what do I want? Do I want the reliability and confidence that I've gained over the last 18 months in the Stealth um, and Pro Force shaft combination, or am I chasing distance? And that's a similar debate I think that a lot of you golfers would have. An additional point to mention there is let's not forget that the Stealth 2 HD is not intended to be their longest driver in the range. So if I was looking to do a head-to-head -head comparison and wanted pure distance, then I'd go for the Stealth Plus in, um, and, and that combination of a lower spinning version would be more in line with the comparison that I'm making. So really important to point out again, this is not a comparison video. This is personally about looking at the dilemmas that you face in choosing a driver. And this is what I'm faced with right now. Let me know down below what your current situation is, how you're looking at your, or how you made a choice of the driver that you chose and why. And I'd love to hear from you what it is that makes you choose your driver. Like I said, is it about when you're going for a driver fitting or try a new driver, are you really thinking, right, I want to see if it goes further than my existing driver. If it goes further, then I want to buy it because yeah, I can, uh, yeah, I get longer drives. Is it as simple as that? Or is it about control? Is it about feel? Is it about looks? Or I assume it would be a combination of all those things, but how many of you would forfeit distance over control? That's another super drive and uh, yeah, that's kicking on as well. Great ball flight, really stayed over that one. And uh, it's quite a bit of a drilled shot, if you like, and defies what this thing is supposed to do. You, so you can manipulate it a little bit. And like I said, I'm always confused with all of these videos. And ever since I've really come across this Pro Force shaft is just how much of the um, importance is on the head or how much is actually the importance is on that shaft choice because I really do feel since I've switched up into this shaft, I've never drove so consistently, have so much confidence and feel so much stability. Well, that's just leaked out a tad, not as good of a swing either. 
Oh, I've just clipped the tree actually. Um, but I will say that in terms of stability, this uh, graphite design shaft is as close as I've got to a very much similar sort of feeling type of shaft. I'm no shaft expert in terms of where the kick point in these things are, but my guess is it's a very, very similar makeup because like I said, it feels very, very similar indeed. You can understand, personally, it's a very tough decision, but I think I should reveal what my choice is out of these two drivers. Right, decision making time for me at least anyway, and uh, from what I've learned today, let's go there first of all, and I've briefly mentioned it anyway, just making sure you get all those combinations right, that's the key, and then choose your driver in what it is that suits your game and what you're looking for. And for me, what I'm looking for is consistency, stability, finding fairways, and distance isn't my overall rider right now. And because of that, I'm gonna stick with what I know. So the Stealth 2 is gonna stay in the bag, or the Stealth into the Stealth 2 will stay in the bag. And maybe more importantly, that Pro Force V2 shaft will stay in the bag because that's the bit that ultimately made the decision, just confidence um, and sort of history, I suppose, with the way I've played with it for the last 18 months. There wasn't a great deal to split them and I could quite easily switch up into the PXG to gain a few yards. And I did like the stability within that shaft, but I don't feel the need to change right now. And I think that everything that is in that HD certainly suits my game and uh, long may that continue. Right, that's another video filmed out at Quinta de Marina in Cascais, Portugal. We've got a great few days here and uh, lots of content filmed, so make sure you keep tuned in, keep watching, because we've got some interesting challenges that feature this driver. Right, I must not forget to thank Glencore Golf as well, because uh, they did a lot of work in making this thing possible. Right, all done. I'll see you tomorrow night.